Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, it's Cass. Today we're gonna do a cool alcohol ink painting of uh, a wren on a cactus. And I'm starting off with a cool tool here. You can see I've got my little, uh, my little pad. And for real, I had this thing for a really long time before I ever used it, and I admit, originally, I did not really see its purpose. But I have come to love this little stamping tool uh, for backgrounds and stuff. It's really, really neat being able to use to apply both color and alcohol. And even once the pad is dirty, it's still very useful. I Today I'm using a dirty pad because I wanted nice neutral tones. I wanted to have nice browns and tans and stuff, and I'm going to add even more colors into the background. This pad's also really useful for uh, cleaning up your palette. You can see that I'm just wiping it through different areas of my palette because I use the same palette all the time for alcohol ink, and every now and again I find that my palette gets really jumbled up and I need to make some empty spots. When that happens, I just use this pad, spray a little alcohol on it, and sop it all up. It's fun, because I can use it to wipe up all the color from my palette, use those blended neutral muddy tones to make a nice muted background. You'd be astonished at the beautiful different neutral tones you can get, the greens and browns and grays and taupes and beiges that you can get by using a dirty old felt pad and some mixed up old alcohol inks. For real, I almost never buy neutral tones. I don't own a gray alcohol ink. And I only own one brown, essentially. And that's because these beautiful mixed tones are so easy to make and so easy to harvest from your palette. You see, my palette looks like a total mess, but every place where two colors meet, that's the opportunity for a nice neutral tone. So experiment with this pad here, making your background. Experiment with stamping up and down or wiping the pad through the alcohol and seeing what it looks like. Have fun with it. Essentially, it's done when you like it. Okay, so here I'm going to go in with a little bit of uh, terracotta. Nice and light. I'm just going to go in and rough in the shape of my bird here. And this is a wren that's going to be perched on top of a cactus with a nice beautiful yellow cactus flower on it. So just go through and sketch out the outline of the bird, essentially. Sketch out the areas. I'm, now I'm going down to my little leg and foot, figuring out where it's going to be sitting. I'll rough in the forms of the cactus and everything. And essentially once uh, my first drawing is done, I'm just going to go back and erase a little bit of that uh, background out of that cactus and out of that bird, but not a lot. I'm going to use those neutral tones to my advantage. It's true, if I leave all of that ink in there, I might get a bit of a muddy result. But here, as you can see, I just took my trusty syringe and dropped a drip of alcohol into uh, this one part of my cactus. And I'm just using it to move it around and to unify that area of my composition. Now I'm gonna go ahead and individually to every part of this composition, I'm gonna go through and uh, clean up the areas that I want to paint over after. And I'm even going to make myself a little bit of a, a guideline on this uh, big section for where the thorns are going to go. Have fun with it, don't be too crazy about it. Remember that uh, it's not a contest and every time you use this medium you will learn new things about it. Erase more, erase less, figure out what the final product looks like and ask yourself if you like it. It's not about whether it sells or whether it gets a lot of likes or whether it gets 500 comments or whatever. It's about you making something that you enjoy and at the end of the day being happy. Happiness is more important than likes. Okay, we're gonna get a little adventurous here. I'm gonna use some really dark blue. Uh, I've already got some black ink in this brush that I'm using, so it's going to amount to uh, blue-black and I'm going to use it to push back the very darkest areas of this composition, starting with my bird's tail. Be careful that you don't use too much alcohol at this point. You, you're better to have a brush stroke that is too dry and brushy than not enough. You can always go back and add a little bit more ink to your brush, but if you find that your ink is too wet, as in too much alcohol in it, this beautiful dark brushy line will turn into a two by four in no time. So you just got to be careful. 
I don't know if you guys can see that I've messed up the placement of uh, my bird's right foot, so I'll have to fix that later. But I'm going to leave it for now, and I'm just going to move on. Sometimes it goes like that. You know, we make an error, and we have to live with it. Honestly, the painting that I painted yesterday started as a big mistake. I started painting violets, didn't like them, and melted them with alcohol, and ended up painting this beautiful painting of a uh, cactus with birds flying into them. So I really liked it, and, you know, go with it. You never know what failure might turn into a success, so don't be so hard on yourself. Me, I'm forgiving myself for misplacing my bird's second foot, and you know what? If it turns out that his right leg is too long, who cares? So yeah, keep your black nice and brushy here, or your dark blue, whatever you're using. I'm I'm not using a, a factory color here. I'm using, honestly, a mix that I've made. It's black, it's got denim in it, it's got all kinds of dark colors. It's my go-to dark neutral tone. Keep it brushy, keep it dry, hydrate your brush just enough to make it work. Now I'm going to get ready to work on my cactus. I've put some bottle green into uh, my palette here. And in my other green section I've put some sunshine yellow to make a nice lighter green. I'm going in with my lighter color first. I'm just having a look at my reference photos and thinking about which areas of the cactus are lighter and darker. I'm just blocking in my color. I'm not thinking too much about detail or anything. I'm just thinking about getting the values in. That's one thing I love about alcohol ink. It's beautiful and bright and vibrant and the colors are fantastic and it really lends itself to not being too specific with your details. You don't have to plan everything in life. Go in with your darker tones and keep adding, uh, adding colors. Remember that along the sides of the cactus it will be in shadow, so it'll be a little bit darker. Don't worry about filling in the entire cactus. I'm leaving a bunch of spaces too. It doesn't matter. It adds to the texture of the cactus. Also, don't worry about avoiding where the uh, thorns are because you're just going to go back and add those later. Now I'm going back into my black mix. and I'm going to go over its shadows a little bit. Again, I'm keeping it super dry and brushy just like I did on the bird because I don't want a super wet ink to go and melt away that green that I've put in. I really just want it to sit nicely beside it. Here I'm pretty happy with my cactus, so I'm going to attack my bird. I'm going to go in with a little bit of terracotta, so I'm just going to drip this terracotta into uh, my palette here, where I like to keep my warm browns. And I'm going to, again, keep my brush really nice and dry. I'm going to go in and brush some terracotta in on my wren's head. I'm just... Again, just looking at the values and everything, block it all in, don't worry about details, just get it down. I mean, you can fart around with it as much as you want trying to make it photorealistic, and you absolutely can obtain a painting that looks like a photograph, and if that's what does it for you, then knock yourself out. Me, I have no... I get no joy out of producing an image that looks like a photo. It makes me feel like I've wasted my time. I should have just taken a picture. And I find a lot of times with the paintings um, that I end up liking the most, they're the ones that, while I'm working on them, I think, is this good enough? Is it specific enough? Does it look like what I want it to look like? But if I let go and just block in the values and don't overblend and don't overthink, nine times out of ten, I really adore the final product. So don't judge yourself over much, and uh, just have fun with it. You can see I'm going back and fixing my bird's foot here. We'll see if its leg looks freakishly long in the end, but you know what? Can't take back the past, and uh, you don't need to. If you find you've made an error like I did, just go back with your brush with some alcohol in it, but not too much, and just erase out what you need to. I'm using narrow paper, so that's really, really easy. If you're using Yupo, you can do it, but you just can't take all of it away. But still, to an extent it does work so go for it if you need to erase something erase paint over it don't worry about it it's fluid let it go now the wren has a super super dark super pointy beak with just a little bit of a curve in it and that is a lot of what will uh, make your drawing or your painting really look like a wren so try hard to get that nice dark black sharp beak that's what's going to say Ren to the bird enthusiasts who look at this painting. Now I'm going in with more dark. I've got uh, my black again, or my blue-black as it were. Filling in the darker values in my bird. Pushing back all the shadows. You can really see the difference between the ink that is 
more diluted and the ink that is more highly concentrated. Play around with this and uh, figure out where you want to use each one because really they all have uses. So now we're going to do the thorns on the cactus and uh, we're going to do this with some really really diluted yellow. So I just am dripping some alcohol into some yellow I already have on my palette. Make sure your brush is wet enough because you want it to leave a little spot where that thorn is. But you don't want it to run everywhere and turn into the size of a toonie, so just be careful about it. Experiment with your alcohol drops to find the right ratio that you need in your brush. And remember, you can always go back in later and reinforce these thorns. There are no rules, really. Okay, so when we're satisfied with our thorns, we're going to go in on that beautiful yellow flower. First thing I'm going to do when I start working on this flower, I'm going to drop some just a drop of alcohol out of my syringe right into the flower and I'm going to just use a little bit of my sunshine yellow and establish those values wet and wet. Now be careful here, put a drop down but don't put two or three drops down because they will take over your whole composition. So one drop of alcohol and go and move it around, add a little bit of yellow, think about what areas are brighter yellow, what areas are lighter, and be careful to preserve your white space. Again, you can lift it out after, but it's always easier if you don't have to, right? This is going to be fun. When I'm done my flower, I'm going to take some sunshine yellow, and I'm just going to splatter some droplets on my background because, well, just because I feel like it. I like to have a little bit of uh, textural interest here in my background, and I really like that sunshine yellow, and it looks so beautiful next to my cactus that I just want to have some more of it. Now, after I'm done having fun splattering my uh, sunshine yellow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusted black Sharpie and I'm going to use that to uh, reinforce my blacks. You can skip this stage. Our painting looks really beautiful and painterly and soft, and if you like it at the stage where it is, just leave it. I don't know why, but I like high contrast. I like black blacks and full colors and white highlights and I often finish an alcohol ink painting with a black sharpie and you know what if you like do it doing it do it if you don't let it go try it this time if you don't like it then uh, then you know what you're not gonna do next time but me I like to use my sharpie to finish just be careful if you do this don't go overboard don't put a hard black outline all around everything because that will just take the life out of it it'll just make it look like a a clip art image and it'll take the magic out of it. But some well placed low lights and uh, black outlines to make your image pop will really really give it something special as long as you're careful about it and selective. See around my, out my cactus I am not outlining each oval shape cleanly. I'm using a, a furry broken scribbly line to illustrate how fuzzy and prickly the edges of those cactus are so just have fun work with your sharpie a little bit and then stand back look at it look at it in a, in a mirror think is this even is it balanced do am i missing anything remember even after the sharpie phase you can go back and fix things you just got to remember that if you add more ink and alcohol after that you're going to melt the sharpie that you put down but that's fine you can make that part of it experiment do it in stages Experiment with using brushwork after you've already sharpied your edges. You might land on a technique that you really like. So that's pretty much it for this little tutorial today. I hope you guys had a lot of fun, and I certainly did. I hope that you guys appreciate the value of your palette. I want you to see that every color in your palette is useful. Even if you think, oh, this is mixed up, this is dirty, this is muddy. All of those colors have a place in the world. If you dug this video, make sure you like it and uh, subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure you drop me a line and leave me an idea because you could be the lucky winner of my painting giveaway. Let me know in the comments or DM me on Instagram. Let me know what you'd like me to paint. If your idea is chosen, you win the final painting. Can't wait to hear from you.